Thank you. Okay, I need to make a bigger. So start to six point one on the page two. Then we're gonna do the this example. Okay. X is a start to G. Okay. So we are looking for composite function f circle G of X. Okay. But you guys know what's the G of X? Nothing to do with X. X is I cannot do anything. But we know what's G of X. G of X, which is that one, right? One over x plus four. Okay. Then that one over x plus four, it's attached to f right now. Oh, f is attached to that part, right? So now I have to pay attention to what's the f. So my f. It's B, this guy, okay? F of X is 2 over X minus 3. So if we have a X, I have X, right? So now my question is changed. No more X, what's happening here? It's a 1 over X plus 4, right? So this change, it's be 1 over X plus 4, right? That whole thing, it's be this bad. Did you see the answer? So make sure that x be changed to that whole big thing. 1 over x plus 4 minus 3. Okay. Any questions so far? Okay, if you have any question, chat me. Or, uh, you know, you can skip back, unmute, and they just speak up so I can see it. Okay. Uh, any questions so far? Did you understand that this X change? Change yeah. to the dark whole thing? Yeah, yeah. go ahead. Seven. Seven? Oh, nine. Seven. Mm -hmm. Are you okay? Alex? Uh, hopefully it's okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. Okay, make sure. Answer. This is the answer, but did you see it's a mess? So you don't leave the answer like this. You gotta simplify a little bit. Then how do you simplify it? So here is complex fractions. Did you see? There's a fraction happening x or plus four. So if you wanna cancel the fractions, I need x plus four, x plus four, x plus four. Everything time is by the x plus four. Okay? So that's the way it works. So make sure this one, it's be x plus 4 times 2. The. But this one, x plus 4, the one bar, so we can cross out. That's the reason I don't want to see the fractions. Okay, make sure it's simplified. So it's just 1, okay, if you cross out. Then this guy, negative 3, x plus 4. Okay. Then I just need to simplify. Okay, so it's be simplified. Simplified. So let me get the final answer. 2x plus 8 over 1 minus 3x minus 12. Sounds like 2x plus 8. Negative 3x. 8, 1 minus 12. So it's been negative 11. Did you understand? So this is we call composite functions. That's the answer. So here's the final answer. Any questions so far? But there's a one more question we have. There's another question say, what's the domain? Find the domain. Okay, so first I want you to take a look at this part. Here is the x, x attached to the g. So it's a B, G of X. I'm pay attention to G, this guy, G of X. Do you remember the rule set? What's the number I cannot plug in? There is a rule for the fraction. There is a number we should not plug in. What's number is that? Right? What's number we should not plug in? 
Yeah. You can speak up. You can speak up. There is a number I should not plug in. Which number I should not plug in? X should not be. What did I say? <coughs> negative four, right? Because if you plug in a negative four, it's a zero. Oh, it's undefined. But also this guy, this is my actually answer. Also, you have a denominator happening. But there is a number I should not plug in again. The that denominator. Can you see that? What's number I should not plug in? Uh-huh. Can you see it? Yes. Yeah. It's be negative eleven over three. Right? Because if if the if this one negative three x minus eleven equals zero. Right? Negative three x equal eleven. X is eleven over negative three. Because if I plug in eleven over three, you get zero. Well, I know I should not plug in eleven over negative three. That's the another one, right? Okay. So there are whole happening. So now think about the number line. Uh, which one is smaller? This guy or that one? Which one is smaller? Negative four, eleven over negative three. Negative four. Negative four is smaller. Okay. So negative four is here. Then this is negative eleven over three. Okay. So every single number is fine. Just don't plug in the negative four. Every single number is fine. Just don't plug in the eleven ne over negative three. Right? So here is my domain. Just not the two numbers. So answer say negative infinity two, negative four, right? Then skip it, jump it. Then negative four to negative eleven over three. Then jump again. Union negative eleven over three to infinity. So here is your final answer. That's called the domain. So domain of that composite functions. Because you have a two fractions happening, so you have to do the both, take care of the both. Yeah. Not that this guy. I don't care this guy. Because first one is g of x. That's why I have to care about the g of x. Not the f. f you don't care. Okay? Because the first number you start is what's the g. That's why don't look at the f. You don't care the f. You just care about the g. They care about your final answer, this guy. Hi, right, any any questions so far? If you get it, can you show me, you know, any thumbs up or like, you know, any any reactions, it's gonna help me, okay? It's gonna help me. You good? Or you can just chat me, yeah? Hey. Right. Yeah, can you try this guy? This is another good question. You will see a similar homework questions. Let me show you guys, okay? So it's be F circle G of X, right? X, again, X attached to the G. Oh, that's that guy, right? So it's be radical X minus one. Then it's happened to the F. F. F happening. So now I know I need to pay attention to the F. What's my F? Oh, here is my F. Here is my X change. Here is my X change. Yeah. So now how do you change it? This X change, that guy. So this X has to be changed. Change it to that whole thing. That's it. This guy is radical. X minus 1. Square, right? I need a square. Plus 1. So what you get? You square root of the square. So you cancel out. That's why x minus 1 plus 1. That's a nice answer. So what you get? Answer is x. You get? That's the answer. No? Well, that's, it. that's the answer. Oh, x is my answer. Okay, that's the composite functions. f circle g of x is x. Uh, yeah, go ahead. So, so what would be the domain of this? Of that's just right. X? That's right. So, so first, look at this guy. I have a x attached to the g. 
Oh, I should look at that guy. What's the rule, say, if you have a radical? There's a rule for the radical, say. Oh, uh... Inside has to be... Always... Greater than or equal to zero. Inside has to be positive number or zero, right? That's the radical rule, say. Yeah. Inside has to be always... Yeah, greater than or equal to zero. That means x minus 1, bigger than or equal to zero. So x is bigger than 1. Like if you move the 1. Because that x, I don't care, right? You can plug in whatever x I want. That's why this has no domain. Domain is all real numbers. Because you plug in whatever you want. But this has some restriction for that. That's why this is my domain. So domain in this case. It's a one, they closed, they go to the bigger, right? Because you have to go to the greater. Right? So what's the answer? Answer is bracket, one, then how far you're gonna go? Infinity. Okay, that's the domain. Any questions? Right here. You good? Can you see? Or oh, not so good? We joined that. Okay? Very good. Good? Pretty good? Okay. <sighs> I miss you guys. Really. <laughs> Missing teaching in class. We never know when we can come back. Seriously. Sorry, guys. Even, I don't know, did you guys hear or not? Even it's saying is. For even we don't know, we can come back or not. I heard that Ferdinand's Fer already switched to online for the fall. Yeah, so some college is all already start for is it's online or something. Saying I mean, Leo haven't said anything yet, but summer is definitely it's online. That's not gonna change it. But for I heard some college is it say it's online. I think the color state is more it's saying it's online. Yeah, it's it's yeah, really it's 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 so bad. It's 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 I don't know what's really happened for the that years. I can't believe it. What's really happening right now, right? It's just it's whole thing shutting down. It's, oh gosh, you know. But hopefully Zoom help you guys. Okay, let's let's get the down next page. Yeah. Next one. This is not too bad. Okay, what they say is. This is composite functions. Already, I have a composite functions. Okay. Oh, I got the composite functions. So what is g of x? Then what's the h of x? So that is it. So this set f circle g of x is already x plus 5. So that is it. Well, it's radical x plus 5, it's already, it's be given. Then what is f of x? What is g of x in this case? That's what you're looking for. Okay. Then pay attention here. What's the inside I have here? Oh, inside is x plus 5, right? Inside has x plus 5. Oh, that's my inside happening. But what's the outside happening? Outside happening radical. Oh, outside happening radical. It's a radical big thing. Because if you plug in x plus 5 right here inside, that's happening, right? Does that make sense? So first, make sure what's inside. Pay attention to inside. Inside is our g part happening. Then what's the outside? Outside is a radical part. So radical part happening for the F part. So that's the answer. That's it. This is the answer. Does that make sense or doesn't make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Does that make sense? I'm a, I'm a little confused. You're confused? <laughs> okay. Okay. Just, just, hold on, hold on. Just look at that one. F circle G of X. Start X, right? What's that? G of X in this case. Oh. Um, 
x plus 5, right? Plus 5. x plus 5. There I have a f happening. Right? So what's my f say? Oh, f is happening for the radical. Right? Right? So it's that only that inside will change because I have to change the x plus 5. Oh, oh it's x okay. plus 5. That's why it's question said that guy happening. Okay. Okay, so that's really happening. Oh, it's a radical right? x plus 5 happening. You got it? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I got it. You got it? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, let's try that one. This is the last one I want to do, 6.1. Okay. That's the last thing I want to do, 6.1. Okay. So this one I know looks a little complicated. But what they say is F circle G of X is that messy stuff. X plus 3 square plus 5 over 7 minus X plus 3 square. Okay. Yeah, can you find the f of x and the g of x in this case? What's the f of x and the g of x in this case? Wouldn't the g of x be x plus 3? That's right, x plus 3. Can you see that? That's great. Yeah. Because yes. it's sharing this part of this part the same, right? Yes. Uh, this part or this part the same. That means, oh, x plus 3 is put in here. And they put in here. Right? Oh, x plus 3, it's we go here and they go here. Then what's the f part? So x plus 3 put into where? Right? x squared plus 5. Mm -hmm. plus x plus squared plus 5. And then 7 minus x squared. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah. Right? yeah. Because x plus 3 is going to right here, so that's I got. Right? Oh, x plus 3 going to right here, that's I got. So that's the answer. That's it. This is the answer. Okay. Any questions here right now? Okay. This is 7, 6.1. Okay. Uh, you guys are good? Can I move on the next or... Uh, you want to think yeah, about we're good. it? Give it again? Okay, let's move on to 6.2. Okay? 6.2. Okay, I think it's okay. Alright, 6.2. It's called a 1 to 1 function. Or oh, have you ever had the inverse functions? Okay. So don't worry about this part, okay? Function is one to one. Do you know one to one function means? If every element y in the range is exist exactly one element of the x, it's such that y equal f of x. Okay. I know if you just read it, maybe you guys get confused. <laughs> okay. So pretty much what they're saying is. Just so think about that one. I have an x value, right? Here is y value, right? Let's say y equals x plus 3 or something, okay? Let's say I have x plus 3. So I'm going to plug in the one value, 1, right? So what's the result? Oh, I got the 4, right? So each element of x gets you the only one element y, right? If we put the two, you get the different number five, right? So this is exactly one element applied to that, just exactly one element for the y, okay? So every element y in the range exists exactly one element x, exactly one element x each time, okay? But sometimes, You see one, there are two values might be happen, like, you know, two or three or something. That's definitely not the function. No? This is not the function at all. Right? You cannot have the two different y values. Okay? The, sometimes 
so you might see something like this. Like y equal uh, x square graph. Okay. If I plug in the one, what you get? It's one, right? But if I plug in a negative one, what you get? If you plug in a negative one square, that's one again, right? That is, it's a function. You can say function. But it is not one to one functions. Because you have two different x become the one y. That's not the one to one function. One to one is exactly one element x. It's only one, me one me element y. That's called one to one function means yeah. you can share the y value that's you can say function but it's not the one to one one to one means exactly x value belong to only one y another x value belong to exactly another y value. that's the one to one means if we have a two different y that's completely no function at all Okay, it uh, can be functions, or can be one-to-one -one functions, or no function at all. Okay. All right, so this is talking about, we're going to talk about the one-to-one -one functions. One-to-one -one functions. So how can I know one-to-one? -one? Every single time, I cannot check that way. This is harder to check. It's a one-to-one -one or not one-to-one, -one or no function at all. So we don't do it. So... Looking at the graph of the functions, how do you tell that it will be one to one? Have you ever heard this guy? Horizontal line test. It's called a horizontal line test. This is the most easy way to get the one to one or not. One to one. So what's the horizontal line test means? Let's say, okay, don't worry about that part. It's not important. I have a graph, okay? Let's say I have a graph, okay? So we're gonna draw horizontal line test. Oh, I'm gonna draw horizontal line. I'm gonna draw horizontal line, okay? So draw the horizontal line. This. Think about how many points are you crossing. Here it's oh one, two, three points. Okay. Oh. Here it's one point. If you cross only one, you can say one to one functions. If you cross more than one, it's not the one to one function. So this is, it's a fail. This is, yes, it's okay. One, two, one. This is not one, two, one functions at all. Okay. That's called the horizontal line test. Did you understand that? Okay. That's the most easy way to check it to be one to one or not one to one. That's it. You have a hallmark questions. So look at the. Okay, I can show you that one. Okay. Question just like this. Let me see. Seven point two. Okay. See that? That one. See that? Looks like this. Okay. Question say, is this one to one or not? So how do you do it? Draw the horizontal line. If you cross one point, you're good to go. If you cross more than one, no. This is clearly no. Answer is no. Okay? This one? Oh, it's a one-to-one. -one. That's why it's that check. 
Okay, so that's you do. This is just number one, six point two homework. Okay, does that make sense, right? So this one, if you do that, two points cross, answer is no. Okay, so this one looks good to me because if you do the horizontal, exactly one point, that one fine. Okay, so that's the homework question you can do. All right, so let's move on next one. Okay. Okay. Yeah, what's the inverse functions? Okay, so function has the inverse functions. Inverse functions. If function is one to one functions, if graph is one to one functions, you can say it's inverse functions. Do you have ever had inverse function? Do you, do you know inverse function? Okay, I can show you the example what the inverse function means. Okay? What is inverse? If you have additions, what's the inverse of the operations means? We say addition of the opposite is subtraction, right? Yeah, subtraction. Yeah. Right? What's the manipulation for the opposite? It's uh, division. Division, right? So its operation is going to be undo. That's the inverse function means. Okay, so let's think about that one. Okay, okay let's do this example. I have an x value, right? So you have an x value. So plug in the x, then what are you doing here? Times by? Uh, negative one third. No, 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 no. Time is by, time is by. Oh. Three, right? Okay. Time is by oh. three, right? If you just plug in the number, you plug in the number x, and the time is by three, what's the next operation you do here? Add two, right? Time is by three, add two. So now I have to think about the backward. So now go inverse. Instead of add two, what are you doing? Subtract. Subtract the two. Did you see? Oh, I'm subtracting the two. Oh. Subtract the two. Yeah, instead of multiply by three, what are you doing? Divide. Divide by three. Oh, divide. Oh, that's divide by three. That's why originally I have f of x. Then if you go backward, that's called the inverse functions. Yes, subtract the two, divide by the three. So that is the inverse function. So f and then g are inverse to each other. Does that make sense? So that's the inverse function means. So originally you have some functions, 3x plus 2. Then let's make the inverse. That's exactly opposite operation you're doing. Yeah? Subtract the two, divide by the three. Right? Divide by the three. So they are inverse to each other. Does that make sense, you guys? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So then, clearly, I cannot do every single time how to find the inverse. That mapping takes forever to finding an inverse. That's definitely, we're not going to do it. Okay? So I will show you how to do quickly how finding the inverse functions, shortcut way. Okay? Yes. Yeah. Let's make sure this guy. Okay. Just before we're gonna do the inverse functions. Okay? Here is my f law. This meaning I plug in the x. Okay? Then you get the y value. I plug in the x. You get the y value. I plug in the x. You get the y value. That's just regular function f. So what's the inverse means? Inverse pretty much means you do opposite. So which meaning I plug in the four. You're back into one. That's the inverse means. So you pretty much you're going to plug in the four, let's back to the one. Okay. So now the same thing. Okay? You plug in the eight, back to five. Is it? Then you plug in the 10 back to 7. So that's the inverse concept for the points, right? 
So is it a reflection? That's right. It's pretty much X and Y. Let's flip it. That's the inverse means as a point. Okay? That's exactly the same. And then we're going to talk about the notation later. Don't worry about it. Okay, I want to I wanna practice how to find the inverse. Okay, so let's get the inverse. This guy. Okay. Here's the example we're going to start. Okay. So this is the original functions. Okay, this is the original one. I want to find the inverse functions. Okay, inverse functions. Okay. So how do you do? Originally, this is a y, though. 7x minus 2. Sorry, can, are you guys here okay? Sorry, just my house right now, it's a little construction going on. Maybe you hear some noise, but hopefully you can hear my voice clearly. Okay. You, you sound fine. You're fine? Okay, that sounds good, yeah. Because, I mean, I don't mind doing the outside again, but outside is it's really hard to just, you guys see, right? Uh, so, okay, I hope you guys hear fine. Yeah. Okay, make sure this is original function, not the inverse function. So originally I have f of x, 7x minus 2. Okay, this is that one. Yeah? Y equals 7x minus 2. Then I want to make the inverse. So inverse means pretty much x and y. Let's switch it. Okay? Let's switch the x and y. So here's x, 7y minus 2. I need to switch x and y. That's the inverse means. Yeah. So now, what do you have to do? Let's get the y by itself. How do you make the y by itself? Yeah, two, two, uh, the two both sides, right? X plus 2 equals 7y. Then divide by 7. Because I want to make the y by itself. X plus 2 over 7. So that's it. That's called the inverse function. So you don't need to do mapping like, like we did this one. This one takes time to how to do it. So probably you don't want to do it. Okay. So this is the most easy way to get the inverse functions. Oh, this is my inverse functions. So answer is... So notation-wise, f is my original functions. So if you put the f inverse, that's the notation, not the negative one power. Though. This is the inverse means. F inverse is x plus 2 over the 7. So that's the answer. Okay. That's the answer. Okay. So let you guys copy it. Is there any questions so far? Are you guys okay for the how do you get the this guy? A little bit, okay. Ingat? So, okay. We do more examples, so you understand much, 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 much better. Okay. Then look at this guy. Let's practice what's the inverse functions. Okay. Do you know this graph, right? Are you guys remember this one? Here is a U shape, right? It's a parabola x square, but there is a plus 7 happening. Do you know where the vertex? If you have a plus seven, it's not the seven, right? You go minus seven, minus seven, okay? It's opposite, though. It's opposite, yes. Then it's gonna be the U-shape happening, okay? It's gonna be U-shape. But is this one-to-one -one function or not? That's my question. It is one to one functions. If uh, you, no. No, if you draw, that's no one to one because I fail, fail the horizontal line test, right? So it's no one to one. That's it. If it is no one to one, make the not the inverse function happening. There is no inverse functions. But what do you see here? Oh, they are saying is x has to be smaller than or equal to negative 7. x has to be smaller than or negative 7. So which means 
There's nothing here. There's nothing here. It's only half happening. That's the reason we have a this guy. So can I say now one to one functions? Yeah, it's one to one because yeah. I crossed the one. Oh, it is makes one, two, one. That's why I have inverse function. That's why we can make the inverse function. If you don't have this guy, there is nothing you can do here. There is no inverse functions. Because of the, that condition is given, we can say it is one to one function. Okay. So now, how do you do it? So follow the steps. Uh, follow the steps. Here is originally y, right? y. The x plus 7 square. So what's next to step set? We the then switch it, right? Switch x equal y plus 7 square, right? Then how do you get the y by itself? I need the y by itself. Ah, uh, you square root? Yeah, I need to put the square root of both sides. Square root of the x, right? Then I'm going to put the square root y plus 7 square. But, aren't you guys remember, if you put the square root, what do I did? Normally, you got to put something. Plus or minus? Plus minus sign. Okay, I'm going to put the plus minus sign. Yeah. Because that's the rule say, if you put the square root, you need the plus minus sign. Okay? So this one, square of the square root, I can close out. So it's become y plus 7, the plus minus radical x. Okay? Plus minus radical x. Okay. Then I have to subtract the 7. But before we're gonna move on, do you remember that? I switch the x and the y here, right? That means I have to switch that this x become the y. It's the same thing. I switch the x become the y because that's the inverse means. So now, what is saying is supposed to be less than negative 7. They are supposed to be less than negative 7. Okay. So I'm going to subtract the 7 now. Okay. We're going to subtract the 7, right? So y equal negative 7 plus minus square root of the x. But just let me think about it. Let you guys think about it. They are saying is, Y is always, always less than negative 7. Then which one should I take? Should I take the plus or should I take the negative? Okay. If you put the plus sign, right, it's a more than negative 7 happening. So I have to take the negative sign. Does that make sense? That the answer is y have to be negative 7 minus square root of the x because of that. y is always less than negative 7. This is because of this one. So here is the inverse function. Inverse function is negative 7 minus square root of x. It's just a notation, so we're going to use it. All right, let you copy it. And if you have any questions, look, tell me or uh, ask me. Okay, any questions here? You guys good? I'm good. You good? Anyone? Anyone? Else? Okay. You all good? Okay. Then let's move on. Jack, can you try that one? Maybe you guys try. How do you do it? Let me give you.
give you a couple minutes. You try it. Then we can check it. Which one are we, are we doing? Uh, number three, yeah, right? Thank you. Okay. How do you do it? Did you get that? I'm still working on it. Still working on it? I mean, I know you guys cannot see each other, but you know, you can talk. You can talk to each other at least, you know. What? Y equal radical x minus 3. And I'm gonna switch x equal radical y minus 3. Then what? So how do you do it? We square both sides? Yeah, because I need to make yeah. the x by itself. Okay, let's square the both sides. Right? I'm going to square the both sides. Okay. Square the both sides, so it's x squared equal y minus 3. Then what? You add 3 both sides. Add 3 both sides, right? So y equal x squared plus 3. Any questions here? No, I'm alright. You guys okay? No, we're good. All right, good. Okay, that's not so bad, right? Those are. Yeah. Okay. The one thing I want you to be careful. Sorry, I need to figure out that part. Okay. Sorry. Let's go back to the just a little front page, one page back. I just want to explain one more thing here. Yeah. Here it's summarized. Yeah. Here is regular x. Here is regular y. Okay. Okay. Then from x to y, that we call regular function f. Okay. Which means if we have x value, we call the domain. Right? Domain. Then we have a y value, we call range, right? So regular function f has domain and the range. Okay. So sorry, this meaning the function. The here is domain and the range means. You normally plug in the x value, you get the y value result. Yeah, when you go back here, that's the inverse function happening. Inverse meaning pretty much you're going back. But you start that number the back to here. Okay. So here is the inverse function, right? The yeah, inverse has a domain. Always whatever the start number called the domain. But did you see the inverse domain is? It's a range of the original functions. Okay? The, when you back to here, that's the range, but original domain become the range. So you pretty much switching. Okay. So you start domain, then you end up the range. But if you go inverse, meaning starting point is be the range. That's the that's the same. Start the point is be the actually originally the range. Right? Then when you back it's originally my domain. That's pretty much happening. That's the inverse link. That's the this say this is explained. Domain of the F is the range of the inverse. And the domain of the inverse, range of the F. Okay? Domain become the range, range become the domain. That's just inverse to each other. That's pretty uh, much the I have yeah. a question. Yeah. So um, I remember you said something about this a while ago, mm -hmm. um, about like whether something was a function or not. Mm -hmm. Is this uh, is this the the same thing for yeah. finding the inverse? Yeah. Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's have to be one to one. If one to one function, 
then it's an inverse have to be happen. If it is not the one to one, never happened. Nothing happened. So, so this is uh, this is for both of them, right? Like the x can't have two values that equal yeah, y. Yeah, yeah, x cannot be happen. Yes. If you have something happening like this, there's nothing inverse happening. There's no way you can make the inverse. Inverse meaning exactly you go back to the this way to the that way. Okay. That's the inverse means. That this one is nothing inverse. Those are not gonna be inverse at all. This okay. is the only you have inverse happening. <laughs> because you exactly back to the original question, original number. <laughs> okay. Because how do you go back? You have a choice. So we don't know which one you are going back. That's why nothing happened here. Okay. <laughs> That's me. Okay. Just hopefully you understand the concept. <laughs> Any questions? Six point, but six point two main part is how to find the inverse functions. Finding an inverse function. That's the most six point two. We are more in moving on six point three. Today's we are mo really moving on quickly. Okay. Six point three. Hopefully not too bad. Okay. This guy, did you understand? If I plug in the zero, your y value is one. Okay, this is nothing to do with the inverse function. Don't worry about it. Okay. If you plug in the zero, you get the one. If you plug in the one, you get the two. If you get the two, get the four. If you plug in the three, you get the eight. Do you know what kind of functions? Two to the x power. Think about it. If I plug in the zero, what do you get? Two to the zero power. It's one, no? Hey, if I plug in the one, what do you get? Two to the one power. It's a two, right? If I plug in the two, two to the second power. Four. If I plug in the three, two to the cube, it's eight. Oh, that's a two to the x. Yeah, what's the domain in this case? Domain means what value of the x I can plug in this guy. What value of the x I can plug in? Can I plug in the one, two, three, four, five? Can I plug in negative? What do you think? Wouldn't it be positive? It's just a positive, but can I plug in two to the negative one power? Can I do that? What's a two to the negative one power? Uh, 1 over 2? Yeah, 1 over 2. Oh, yeah, I can plug in negative 1, why not, right? So can I plug in negative 2 power? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, 2 to the negative 2, it's a 1 over 4, right? <laughs> yeah. So, I can plug in negative 2 though. So what's my domain in this case? Oh. Uh, all real numbers. Original number, that's right, because I can plug in whatever I want. Right? Then okay. what's the dom range in this case? Range meaning what's your result after you plug in? What's my y value? If I plug in negative 1 or negative 2 or negative 3, what's uh, happening? It's missed. Uh, two, right? 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 So think about that way. Huh? 2 to the negative 1 power, 2 to the negative 2 power. 2 to the negative 3 power. Oh, it comes out as a fraction? It's just a bunch of the fraction, right? It's 1 over 2, right? 1 over 4, 1 over 8, 1 over 16. It's just a fraction, but you know it's never be negative number. It's just getting smaller, 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 smaller. It's just some fractions. So what's the range? Range is always bigger than zero because you don't have a negative number happening there is no negative happening but what happens if i get the x is bigger and bigger and bigger you know two to the 100 two to the 1000 it's an infinity that's it so can you see the graph Okay, sorry. I just quickly graph. You don't need to copy, just listen. Yeah, just listen. It's graph is not so important. Think 
たバーとダメだ。ね。If I plug in a negative two power. Well,、uh, excuse me.、Um, yeah. Can you go over the range one more time? I, I had to go do something. Okay, sure. Okay. Sorry. That's fine. If you plug in a negative power, I put the negative power there.、Right? What's the result, sir? It's always fractions.、Mm. Right? You、oh, never have the negative number.、Right? Yeah, it's always positive fractions. Never be negative fractions. Right?、Uh. That's why everything's a positive number. You never have any negative numbers happening.、Uh, okay. Right? That's why it's zero, it means it's bigger than. Zero, there is no negative happening, and then if we put the 100, or power 100, or power 1,、so、it's just getting huge number happening that's going to be、mm. infinity.、Oh, that's pretty cool. Okay, okay. <laughs> so that's the two to the x graph means. Okay. 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 So now, okay, you don't need to copy the graph, just look at it. Look at this graph.、Though. Okay, if you have a zero, if I have a zero power, oh, sorry, it's one. Zero power is one.、Though. If I put the one, two, right? Okay. If I put the two, it's a four, right?、Mm -hmm. Can you see the graph? Graph happening like this. It's getting bigger and bigger and bigger quickly. Okay. Because it's the power. So what happens is that this negative side, negative side is never be negative. It's a negative side, meaning it's a fractions.、Okay. It's a negative one, fractions, negative two. Did you see the graph happening like this? You never cross the x axis,、huh? you cannot cross it. Don't cross it because it's just a bunch of the fractions gonna happen, but it's not the negative number. It s a make sense, right? It's just going to be bigger and bigger and bigger, but don't cross it, don't cross the x. So it will, it will always. Um, it would be super close to zero, but、That's、never、it. touch zero. That's right. It's super close to zero, but never cross it. Never cross the x axis. It's always above the x. Okay. Right? So, what's going to happen if we have a fraction exponent? One over two. But think about it. If I put the one power, right? One over two. If I put the two power, one over four. Right? If I put the one, one over two. If I put the two, two over four.、Eh? Can you see that that way? Again, don't cross it. You never cross it. Okay? You're just getting close to the x. Yeah. So it's just be flip over. It's a flipped. Because if you put the one over two to the negative one power, means what? You flip over, right? It's become the two. So if you put the negative one, become the two. Okay, so the graph is flipped. That's this means. Is that make sense, you guys? Yeah.、Mm -hmm. yeah. So whenever it's like a fraction, it'll always be flipped? That's right. So here is a summary. Let's quickly summarize it. Okay. If we have a regular whole number, graph shape never c h a n g e Graph is always getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So let me write for you. So that's this mean. If base b, it's called exponential functions. If base b is bigger than 1, you know, 2 to the x, 3 to the x, 4 to the x, graph is always like this. Then make sure you cross the 1. One never change it. It's always cross. Cross the one, y axis.、Okay. If base b is bigger than one, graph looks like this. But if base b is fractions, if base b is fractions, so the which is just like that. Oh, getting decrease. So graph looks like this. That is it. It's one. That's the Smith. Okay. Yes, 
Any questions so far? Just to look at the shape. I want to just remember the shape. Otherwise, don't worry about it. It's just, I don't need to ask the like, you know, the detail. Just if we have a base B is bigger than one, graph is going to increase. If base B is fractions, you know, 0 to 1, graph is getting decrease. That's this means. And the B is always positive. There is no negative B happening. It's always positive. That's the more rule say exponential functions. So, mm -hmm. what if like, yeah. So basically, B is never going to be negative. B never be negative. No. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's the that's the rule say exponential function meaning B never be negative. B is always something positive number, but can be fractions. Can be fractions. Oh, okay. okay? Okay. Can I go next page? This is the only part I want you to make sure. And then Okay, I'm gonna go to the another. Have you ever heard number E? <laughs> Have you ever heard the E? E called isn't it exponential function? Mm -hmm. Oh, never mind. Natural number. Natural number. When you have a calculator, did you see the calculator has an E number? E. E is a yes. special number, actually. It's a some mathematician or like a physician find it. So E is just like pi. Pi, everybody knows it's 3.14. So either it's a math in math, it's a really special number. Okay. So E is actually it's a number two point seven one eight. Just like pi, we use pi for the three point one four. So E is called a natural number, that number, natural number. Which is so I just don't want to I don't wanna get confused. E is not a letter though, it's a number. Number about 2.7182 for the mass. <laughs> okay. Because we're gonna start using a special number E later. Don't worry about how do you find the E, but, but I just want you to make sure E is a number. It's called a natural number. Okay. It just, if you take the physics, we're gonna use E all the time. It's a sp really special number. Alright, can I go to the next one? Okay, we're gonna do that. Yes. Okay. So that's why like sometimes you're, gonna, you're going to see the e to the x power. But again, e is a number though. E is a number. e to the power x. Well, sometimes you see that, that textbook uses this one. exp, which means e. e to the x power means. That's why calculator has e all the time. Because your calculator has to have an e. e to the power x. Okay, right, let's move on now. Okay, so here's your homework questions. Okay, we do the homework questions. Okay. Okay. okay, so here's the homework questions. Homework said, find the formula for the exponential functions. Okay. Well, there's the formula. I'm going to write it for you. Formula said, y equal a b to the x a is some constant number we don't know the b is a b to the x that's the exponential function means b to the x okay so a times b to the x okay. then we are going to finding a and b that's the this question set. oh let's find the a and the b so how do you find the a and the b that's the number oh my question said this functions it's gonna go through that two points which meaning this is my x value right? that's the y value this is another x this is y value okay so use these two points that we're gonna find the a and the b that's the discretion set all right so let's start here so 3 over 25 it's be the my y value 3 over 
25 and the a if that's fine we're gonna find the a the x the b we don't know right b the x is negative 2 bar okay okay so far that's i got okay. just use the another point okay y value is 375 again i don't know a the b and I know x is 3, so let's plug in the 3. Okay. How can I solve that guy, right? How are we going to solve that? Because goal is anyway A and B, though. That's my goal. Okay, okay so here's the technique we're going to use. Don't worry about how to. Okay, so let's make the, this guy A, B to the cube equal. 375, right? That's this function set. Then, A, next one, B to the negative 2 equal 3 over 25 set. Okay? Yeah. What happens if I make the ratio for the, this one? Let's make the fraction each other. So a b to the cube over a times negative 2 power equals 375 over 3 over 25. Can you see? I can cross out the a's, right? Top and yeah. bottom. Okay, what's this guy? Do you remember how to make the, this equation? b to the cube over b to the negative 2 power. Um, 1. No, 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 no. What I say, if you have a fractions, we are subtract, right? Yeah. What's the subtract? Oh, wait, oh, wait, three, three minus negative two is five. Three minus Sorry. negative two, though. Three, yes, minus negative, yeah. right? That's like the five, yeah. power five. Oh, it's right. a power five. Sorry. Yeah, that's, that's okay, power five. Then, what's this guy? This is a fraction, right? What's a 375 over three over 25? How do you do it? 375 over 3 over 25. How are we going to do it? Mm. Oh, you can... Uh... Yeah, reciprocal, right? We're going to make the reciprocal. So what's that? <laughs> 25 over 3. Oh, sorry. Wait. Yeah. B to the power 5, though. Okay. Oh, if you have a hard time, just think about it. This way. Oh, times by the 25 because I want to cross out. If you do times by 25, you gotta do times by 25, top and the bottom. Okay? So 25 cancel, right? This is about the 25 times 375. So you need it, okay? So it's, what's the 375 times 25 over 3? I mean, you can, you can hit the calculator. It's gonna get to the nice number, I believe. Uh, I got, I got three one two five. Mhm. Mm Divide by three, right? Yeah, this one. Three one two five. So b to the cube equal three hundred hundred twenty five. Three thousand one twenty five. But this guy, can you find the b? Something power five is a three thousand hundred twenty five. I'm sure you can do it. If you want to make the 3,125, this guy is what? 5 to the, what do you think? Power 5. It's that one. Oh, 3,125, 5 to the power 5. Oh, 5 to the power 5. So, which means B is what? B equal. I mean, That's five, five. five. Yeah, B is a five, right? B to the power of five have to be five to the power of five. Oh, B is a five. That does it. So B is five. That actually it makes it easier. Well, once you get the B, I can plug in the B back here. So I know I can find the A quickly. Is it make sense, right? Oh, B cube, I can put that. Then let's find the A. Okay. 
So it's B, A times 5 cube equal 375. So what do you get the A, right? 375 divided by, what's the 5 cubes, right? 5 cube. So what do you get? 375 divided by 5 cube. Is it three? 125. Oh, wait. Yeah. Oh, 125 divided. Yes, you divide yeah. by 125. Yes. Yeah. Where did you get it? Ross. You had a ton of them, so I got two. Wow. Okay. So, final answer is y equal this one, no? This is your final answer. Three times five to the power x. Does that make sense? Kevin? Okay. Can we just leave it like that? Mm, just leave it like that. This is a finding a formula. We find the formula. That's it. That's the dismiss. Oh. Okay. Okay? Are we always going to know the power of x? Say again? In our answer, it's always going to be power of x? Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, that's the more formula. It's a A times B to the power X. Oh, that's the yes. formula. So, uh, okay, where I was going to keep it, right? Yeah, you have to keep it, yeah. Oh. Is there, is there um, going to be a case where we have like the 5 to the power of like, let's say 3 instead of a 5? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Depend on the that number, oh. your A and the B change. A and the B so change. let's say that we get like a 5 to the power of 3. Then yeah. the R will be 3, not 5. Or that's where I get like I'm kind of lost. I don't know how how did you get the like five because it's the oh, power. Oh no no five 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 is coming here. B, yeah, right there on B. But five is a B. B is a double. B. Are you are you talking about where you, where you got the three? Ooh, no, let's where she got the three. There's a case that we the um yeah. we have like a five power of three, so uh -huh. the it would be five or it would be three. Five. How Identify the B. B is more that one, the B equal. This is a second number, no matter what. Okay. So it's, so it's always going to be five. I think that's what she's trying to say. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm like, okay, what if in the, there's a case that we have like five of, like to the power of three, like how would we get the five? Oh, you yeah. mean like five power three, that mean? Yes. If oh, that was oh, no, nothing happening. You have a, if you have a power of five here, you have to have a power of five. Otherwise, it doesn't work. Oh, okay. Yeah, doesn't yeah work. that's what I meant. I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. No, 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 no. It's not going to happen. Make sure your question has a power of five. It has to be power of five. So if we get like something different, then we're doing it right, wrong, right? That's right. It's be wrong if you get something oh, wrong. Okay, yes. Yeah, yes. Ah, yes. Let's move on a couple more, and then I will stop like another 15 minutes. Okay. Yes, let's move on to this guy. Okay, so, okay, you guys get this part, right? This is the answer. Okay, so I gotta go to that one and then go one more question. Then we are done today. Okay, so, are you guys remember it's a shifting concept? This is another homework question. Huh? This is another homework question. So, you oh. have 9 to the power x. You have a 9 to the power x. Then let's this graph. Shift to seven unit to upward. Oh yeah, I remember this. You one. remember that? If you want a graph, if you have some graph happening, okay? So let's think about it. If you have some graph happening, they exactly bring the, this graph to the up. Yeah, it goes up. Goes seven up. Times. So let's say this is a y equal x square or something, right? Exactly goes up. So how do you change it? <laughs> exactly bring to the up, to this way. Yeah. This means, let's say seven up, right? Seven up, right? Y equal x squared plus seven, no? Because you bring up. So yeah, this is exactly the same. You have a nine to the x, nothing change, but let's bring up, so you're gonna add seven. That's yeah, a difference, okay? Yeah, are you guys remember that this guy? I have a graph. Then let's move to this right side. Y equal. Oh, yeah. Right? If you move to the, let's say, 
seven to the right. What's happening? Move to seven to the right. What's I say? Minus seven square. Minus seven square. Yeah, this is why I call x squared. Exactly move to the seven. To the right is negative seven square. Do you remember that? If we move to the left, positive seven square. This is exactly happening. So seven to the left. Oh, let's move the seven to the left. What do I mean? If we move the seven to the left. Then this is a right. Huh? If we move the seven to the right, it will be the negative, right? Be the positive seven. Oh, that's it. So it will be nine. Make sure what you watch x to the left. The meaning is not the negative. It's going to be positive. Positive seven. But make sure this is the exponent of seven, not the big yes. seven, because x is attached to the seven. Okay. Mm -hmm. So x change. If we're moving a left or right. Got it? Yep. Okay. That's the last things. This guy. Okay. Are you remember that this guy? It's reflective. Okay, yes, reflection. Huh? Um, if we reflection x axis and y axis. Okay. And the y axis. Okay, so, okay. so let's think about that one. Okay. So if you have this guy. Okay. Let's reflect about the x axis. What's happening? If we flip over, this is the y equal x square. If we flip over, what's it happening? Doesn't it subtract? You flip, right? It's been you negative flip, x yeah. square. Oh, yeah, it's. Right? You, because you yeah. gotta flip down. Yeah, it's down, negative. That's why it's negative. So make sure, so which meaning is? So what's happening if you flip to the this side? Now they sense that side because now also you have to flip over the y-axis so that means yeah. I flip to the that side do you remember what's happening if you flip that way do you remember that okay I think it's better to do that. if if I do this way that's not much okay oh yeah if I do that this way okay here's a form x okay okay so if I flip, what you changing? If you flip, what you change? You change the x to a negative. Yeah, this guy meaning is, it's a y value become everything negative, right? Yes. If we, right? It's a negative y value, right? Okay. Then if you go this way, x value become everything negative, right? Negative. Right? So this x value is. Right? Negative x, right? Yes. Okay. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. Okay. So here is x value become the negative x because you are going to flip the y axis. Okay. So nine this x this x negative x because I'm flipping. Now mm -hmm. y value flipping. Right? Because you gotta do both way x axis y axis. So now I can flip. Oh, now I need flip. That's what this means. I'm gonna flip over everything. So that's the answer. Okay, this is your final answer. Okay, that's the final. If you put the negative, meaning flip over the y axis. If you put the big negative, flip over the x axis. That is it. You got that? Yeah. This is a little tricky one. Okay. Mm -hmm. well, I think that last one is a bit. <laughs> yeah, this yeah, one definitely tricky gonna... one because it, some students read really a hard time. Food. Where's the negative? I gotta put it. It's just so many <laughs> negative going on here, right? Yeah. yeah. That's why it makes you guys. Okay. This graph definitely help. Okay. If you flip over the x axis, make sure y value change the negative. Okay. We, if we flip over the y-axis, x value change it. x value change the negative. Okay? x value change the negative. The y value change the negative meaning everything becomes the negative. That's this means. Okay? Yes.
but everything goes easier. Okay. Don't worry about this one. Okay, last couple of questions there with them. This one, everything goes easy. Okay. Then I'm gonna get this part done, and then after this. Okay. It's this guy. Then we are, yes, we are going to stop today. Okay. This guy is much, much easy. Okay. So here is the root. So write the root if b to the x equal to b to the y. Okay. If you look at the left side, right side. Left side is b to the x. Right side is b to the y. Or oh, the same b, b. Which means same base. Which means your exponents have to be same. x equal y. Okay. Yeah, look at this guy. Because that one makes it really easy. Look at that. Oh, e and e. Left side has e, right side is e. Right? Mm -hmm. That's exactly. That means my exponent has to be equal. Oh, my exponent has to be x squared equals 3x minus 2. That's all you have to solve. This question is solved. Solved before oh, they create That's easy, right? Because e and e is the same. So I don't care what's yeah. the e, okay? So this is just need to be solved. That's the discussion. Oh, how do you solve? x squared move to 3x, right? Plus mm -hmm. 2. They equal 0. Okay, so here it is. You just need to factor. Okay. 2, negative 3. Okay. That's it's negative 1. Times negative 1, negative 2. Right, negative times negative, it's more negative. So x, x minus 1, x minus 3. Right? Oh, sorry, x minus 2. My bad. x minus 2. The answer is x equal 1, x equal 2. That's it. That's it's easy. That one is really easy. Okay. The last one, can you solve that one? No. No? I know it's not the same, but that's the tricky one. Because it doesn't look like the same. Here is a 2, here is a 4. That's it, it's yeah. not the same like we are looking for, but can you make the same? Yes, yeah. by dividing it. Wait. Yeah, look at it here. 4 can be what? Okay, 2 you cannot cancel, you cannot change it. Base 2 is base 2. There's nothing to change. Yeah. But 4 can be what? Two. 2 to the power of 2. Yeah, 2 to the power of 2, right? I can change it. 4 can be 2 to the power of 2. Then don't forget the x plus 1. The x plus 1 is we stay, nothing change. Okay? Just 4. I can change it to the 2 to the power 2. Does that make sense? That's why I can see left yeah. side, right side is the same 2. Oh, 2 is done. I just already looking at what's exponent. Okay, so it is 3x equal, right? 2x plus 1. So that you just need to solve. You got it? Right, hey, that's yeah. that. Hey. 3x equal 2x plus 2, answer is x equal 2. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay, that's done. This is your homework question. So I I want to get done so you can you can do the homework question. Can you make the same base? What's my base? Left side, right side have to be same. How you e. do it? E, right? E is E. There's nothing I can do. But this guy, can I change the E E to the what? I know I want to change the E. E what? <laughs> okay, how do you change this uh, E? Negative 4 power, right? If you have a negative 4, you can flip over. Positive 4. Positive 4. Right? Oh, that's why it's done. Oh, E is E, same. I don't need to worry about it. So answer is 
2a plus 3 equals minus 4. So I can find the a. That's the question. Yeah? Minus 3, minus 3. 2a equals minus 7. a is negative 7 over 2. So here is the answer. Any questions here? You do? But that's it. Yep. That's it. Okay. Yes, I think we did enough today. I could write pretty much great. Yes. Okay, so you guys start the homework, you know, chapter six. And then I will start the next week, continue that package. You guys good? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, if you have any questions, okay, if you have any questions, you can post your discussion board. I can answer there. But again, see you guys next week on Tuesday. I will set up. All right? Okay. You guys have a nice weekend. You too. You too. Bye, Bye. guys. Bye.